It's yet another player review day for the Arizona Coyotes as here on Lockdown Coyotes, we break down yet another major player for the team. We got Karel Vemelka, the goalie who stayed around the entire season along. That is on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlik right beside me. On today's episode of Locked On Coyotes, I want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen of your day. I um, want to let you guys know that we are free and available everywhere you get your podcast. It does mean we will never have a paywall. But we do got one more player review to get to, at least one major player review. And we almost forgot about it, but you know what? Um, we were thinking about skaters this entire time. It's like, you know what? That's right. We got to get to a goalie before we start grouping the rest of our players, Carl, because we got Karelve Melka today. Yep. Uh, as I was writing the uh, the reports on Five for Howling for what's going on in the World Championship, uh, I noticed Karelve Melka is having himself a pretty good World, you know, tournament. So we definitely need to talk about him. Uh, he was a major contributor to the Coyotes. Started forty nine games, played in fifty two. Uh, pretty insane numbers for a rookie. Absolutely. And like, especially, you know, especially too, you know, like you don't know what to expect when you bring a guy over from, uh, from Europe. Right. It's like, yeah. cause you know, cause I'm not saying, you know, the, the European game is, in, is inferior, but like, it's different than the American game. Right. It is. So you don't know what, you know, what to expect in, in, in any case. And, um, and the Coyotes took a gamble <laughs> on bringing him in, and it was a gamble that ended up working out. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really not sure what the Coyotes' plan for goaltending was going into training camp, because I think we all kind of have the impression that they did not uh, think that Vimelka was going to be their de facto starter. Like no. he played well in training camp. He earned a backup spot. Uh, then, you know, injuries led to him having to take over as starter, kind of trade that role with uh, Scott Wedgwood when he was picked up. Uh, but after Wedgwood left, uh, it was all Vimelka. Yeah, and then, like, um, you know, v- you know, Vimelka was put thrown right into the fire. At, and again, you mentioned injury, you know, when Carter Hutton went out with injury. And... Uh, and I'll be even frank. Cutton didn't seem to even ha- that he even had a spot with Arizona in the first place. He kind of was was there because the Coyotes needed the goaltender. He was a veteran, so it was like you know we'll give you the benefit of the doubt of being a starter because yeah. you've been around for a long time. But Melka hasn't, so we'll see what happens. And then uh, Hurt goes up injury. But Melka doesn't look great because again he gets thrown to the fire. Wedgwood comes in, kind of you know throws a little bit of a push in there. And then Vimelka starts looking really good after that. Yeah. And Vimelka had some phenomenal stretches where he was playing some great hockey. Uh, one of the things that we've discussed is I believe he had three 45 plus save four. wins. Four. Um, like that is like a goaltender giving his team everything that he can to win. Uh, he was far from perfect. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about that in the in the second period, but I, I think it should be kind of you know addressed that Vimelka had a great season. Uh, he's not ready to be a starter. Uh, who knows if he ever will be? But he can be a good part of a tandem. The mm-hmm. Coyotes definitely need to you know figure out what they want to do with that because I'm not really sure what the plan is. I don't think that it's Vimelka Prosvitov, um, would he be like served with getting like uh, a veteran goaltender back, maybe a Scott Wedgwood if he wants to resign with the Coyotes and just, you know, 
try that again who knows um but you know there's definitely a lot of good in Vimelka's game and um i really enjoyed a lot of it because he definitely made sure that the coyotes had a chance on most nights which is interesting because you know there was a lot of that conversation happening in the off season you know when uh the coyotes unloaded aiden hill when they unloaded darcy kemper and let anti-ranta walk you know it was a part of what um, you know, everyone was saying, even when I had, you know, Craig, you know, Craig Morgan on the show um, last offseason. And, you know, he, and he was like, yeah, this is a sign of the team, you know, that those, you know, those goaltenders would steal you games. And, you know, the Coyotes are not in a position to try to do that. They're, yeah. you know, they're in, as an organization intentionally tanking. And he's mentioned, you know, the team doesn't, the organization does, but whatever. Um, and, but, um, Vimoka came in to prove something that he belonged in the, that, you know, that, you know, his first year in the NHL, that, you know, that he knows what he's doing, that he belongs. And I think, you know, he definitely impressed. And I think he's, um, he doesn't, he definitely does have more to prove, but I think this first year is a good sign. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he wasn't able to consistently steal games, but there were a few, like uh, the one zero, win over the Winnipeg Jets just to me stands out as a massive Carol Vimelka win. Uh, I, I kind of rank it in like my mind of the game where Mike Smith set the record for most saves in a shutout against the Columbus Blue Jackets when he had to face like 55 pucks or something. Uh, I don't think that's the correct number. So please don't quote me on that. But like they're the Coyotes occasionally get some just phenomenal performances out of their goaltending. Um, and sure, like for a team that's doing bad, you don't want someone to do that every night. But mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of got to, you kind of need someone to do it some nights. And Vimelka has 13 wins. And I imagine he didn't get a lot of help for those 13 wins. No. Um, and again, you mentioned it, you know, he had, you know, um, I'm not sure how many of them were wins, but he did have like, you know, four to five, at least 45 save games. Yeah. Um, 45 save plus games, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, I think two of them against the Winnipeg Jets, one um, one against the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, he just does these weird things sometimes where like, he, just, he was just completely lights out. Yeah. And uh, against some better talent too. He's like, whoa, what is happening? Uh, I'm, I'm doing like a quick glance through his like game logs. Uh, and I saw two games where he had over 50 saves. So like uh, one of those, let me be frank. Uh, 51 shots uh, allowed against the Carolina Hurricanes, um, gave up five. So, like, like that's kind of what we're talking about. Like, he was given a very, like, just difficult task. And, you know, he did the best that he could in the circumstances. And obviously, we'll address some of the other defense a- defense aspects when we group some of the players because we only have, we only have uh, addressed, what, less than half the defense yeah um so like we have a lot to you know a lot to get to on that part but like that tells you something right that the defense had a major problem and again that also goes to some 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 of the options like centers too you know you know centers you know are usually two-way they should go back um so it's a it was was a whole team problem and um but the fact that Milka was there was absolutely astonishing Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely Anyways, we still got more to get to on this episode of Locked On Coyotes. Before we get to any more of talking Karel Vemelka, I want to let you guys know that I run a busy schedule with soon. Sometimes I admittedly don't get all the daily vitamins and nutrition I need for the day, which is why I'm able to turn to AG1 from Athletic Greens. It's your one-stop shop of more than 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to get you your day started right. Just one scoop of this special blend, and you are on your way to improve your, your and support your gut health, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's lifestyle-friendly, whether you are keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, and best of all, it costs you less than $3 a day. 
Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. And again, again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So let's continue this episode of Locked On Coyotes, Robin Leonio and Carl Pavlik. We are talking Karevi Malka today on uh, this player review episode of the off season as we approach the end of May. Let's get to it more, Carl. So we talked about what we liked, but let's get to what we needed to see more of, and we'll go we'll go straight right, straight right into it in its consistency. Yeah. Um, he definitely was not consistent because, oh my God, like you can count the amount of games he was good, but you can also count the amount of games he played absolutely atrocious. <laughs> He's like, yeah. like we're like game with like a save that like. You know, any top elite goaltender should have made. It was just like, it goes right past. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and that was a big problem or like a big area we saw that a lot was the, uh, you know, the second period collapse because, mm-hmm. you know, some of those goals, you know, deflections, you know, goes in off someone's skate, goaltending, like they tend to get beat for those. But there was just some goals that Vimoka gave up, like the second or the third goal, where you're just like, man, you, you got to make that one. Like the team is already in a bad way, and this is just going to make it worse. Uh, again, it's not only his problem. Uh, it was a common enough trend that we talked about it, but it should be you know mentioned that he was a big reason for collapses. Definitely an area they need to work on, the mental aspect, the reset, especially after giving up a goal and not will, getting stuck in your head. And I will say this too, um, and and as a thing to take also away from him, I think he was also a product of the way that Scott Wedge would push him. Because look at because I mentioned his start. Really mm. poor start after you know, trying to take over a card for Hutton. Um, Wedgwood comes in and all of a sudden they can make a decent tandem. Um, you know, obviously some still bad game stretches with for Vemoka and for, and for, and for Wedgwood as well. Um, but the moment Wedgwood was traded, Vemoka looked like, <laughs> like for a couple games, like it looked like his old self again, because yeah. he had, because, because, um, there's no way in hell you're going to start, um, uh, you know, Ivan Presbytov right away. And he, cause he's there the holding down the fort until, and um, and sorry, Hari Sedari was able to come in, and Sedari wasn't even wasn't even supposed to be that man to replace. Anyways, he was just there just to kind of fill the hole that that like just an extra goaltender because Wedgwood was gone. Yeah, he he definitely doesn't seem like a player who is ready to be like the guy that you rely on. And you know, there's a chance that he's going to grow into that. He's still young, born in '96, uh, only 26 years old. And we do, we have seen like a lot of good from him, but you know he's not there yet. He definitely needs to have like someone who can start a couple games and give him a reset. Uh, it's a it's a consistency issue. I think it's a it's a mental issue as well. Just kind of you know confidence and understanding that like hey things are getting bad and they're about to get worse because that's unfortunately where the Coyotes were. Yeah, and um, and I think he knows that you know he knows that the team isn't isn't great, and he tries to do what he can while while also trying to adapt to the North American game again because it's different. Like it's yeah. still very. It's I mean like the, the similarities. I'm not saying it's like vastly vastly different enough that's going to be like oh my god what am I doing? No, but it's it's different enough that you know there's changes to get used to. You know, obviously there's you know what 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 goes on behind that, but. That's relatively easy, but also there's less room on the North American ice, yeah. right? Um, which is and all the which, angles are different. Yeah, all, uh, all the angles are different because it's because it's more narrow, and it's like, oh my god, I have to pay attention, and like, and I can get screened a lot easier, and I got to worry about this and that, and like, it's yeah. Plus, 
you're also goaltending for the Arizona Coyotes in one of the worst years of the franchise. Like it was, it was never going to be an easy job for anyone. Like even if the team still had a Darcy Kemper, a Nancy Ranta, an Aiden Hill, like I, I don't know how many more games they would have stolen. The, the team was historically bad. Uh, I, there are definitely areas where Vimelka needs to improve. Uh, and I think we're going to see that reflected in like the ratings that we give, but uh, there's not too many like aspects of his game that I want to, that I'm really able to like break down and be like, you know, he needs to work on this specific area of goaltending. Yep. Uh, we should have had cat on for this one. <laughs> Absolutely. That'd be amazing. Um, but so, a quick side note, cause you kind of, I, I, you mentioned it and it got, it came into my head and I almost forgot about it. And just not even a mocha thing, but just like a team thing. You know, you mentioned it being one of the worst seasons for the in Coyotes history, and kind of, you know, and I'm, you know, paraphrasing because you said something slightly different. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but do you know the whole to- the point total and its difference from its from their actual worst, right? Because, uh, like, cause no, because we're, we're, we're talking about you know, like they're close. They, if they kept losing, they would have uh, ended up getting it would be really hard to you know t- tie or be better than their worst season never which is 56 points yeah they finished with 57 points of this <laughs> so yeah one one better one, uh one, one point, point better. one point one point bet yeah thanks to a miraculous run in the end and let's let's be fair uh that was also vimelka like coming in at the end mm-hmm. uh i think he finally got some offense but he looked much better. Uh, he made. He's looking much better in the World Championship. So while he has struggled, I think we're seeing like a good thing, and he is going to be with the team for a while. So it's nice to see him improve. He is going to be in the team for a while, and we're going to talk about his future in just a moment. But first, we're going to have a quick word from Carl. So I have a message from our partners at Bet Online. They continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even the next NFL futures. Also, this is important for anyone listening to this. There's hockey betting. So if you're in Arizona, you want to like see what's going on, the insane battle of Alberta, you can do that. You want to start like looking at odds for the next round, you can do that. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. What I want you to do is head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. So now let's get to uh, player grades and futures for Kuelvi Milka. Um, grades is going to be an interesting one because obviously we didn't have expectations because of what we talked about in the preseason, right? We're just like, yeah, goaltending is going to be shaky. Yeah. Um, Vimelka also, played. neither of us had seen Vimelka play. Yeah, neither of us uh, seen Vimelka play. So expectations were already like there were none. There's like yeah. not not much we can say. Um, that said, though, like you know, he played over XP. He, he played over what we still anticipated, um, but still had lots of stretches of bad, which is why I'm giving him a B minus. Okay. Uh, C plus. Um, for a lot of the same reasons you said, uh, I think that he had quite a few poor stretches. I think that you know confidence was definitely a big issue. His his inability to reset. Uh, I really think that he needs to work with someone to be good next season. And I'm kind of afraid that the Coyotes do not appear to have that person. Uh, but I think he did really good um, for what it had. Like, he was given a tough hand, but I can't really give him extra points for that. Yeah, I will say it will be nice to see down the road um, when uh, when Ivan is ready to have the two of them, man and you know, man in the back. 
Um, yeah. And both of them are going to look pretty good at that point because you know I think I I think they're both developing in different in different ways. But I think it'll be really fun to watch both of them both both of them back in the net for the Coyotes. Yeah, and, and I mean. It doesn't really matter what we grade Carol Vimelka because he got the best grade of all, and that was a contract extension from Bill Armstrong. Yes. Signed a three-year deal, uh, average cap hit two point seven two five million, total of eight million one hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. A nice bump for a guy who was previously making eight hundred and forty-two thousand five hundred dollars per one season yeah that is a nice bump i mean again you know that 842 it's like oh right, you're coming in for your first year into the nhl we'll just test the water see what happens yeah um, and it it you know it worked you know and it works so it's like you know what we do like you so we're gonna give you that raise um so and i think yeah so like obviously he got the seal of approval from bill armstrong and he's like we like what you're doing Keep doing it. Keep growing. And um, if you become good enough by the end of the 2025 uh, year, 24, 2025, when your contract's up, if you're playing much, much better, then obviously we'll work on another deal out. There might be more. Yeah. Uh, especially something you talked about, like him and Prosvatov. That could be a potentially interesting tandem in the next couple of years uh, if both players continue to improve. Um you know, we talk about defensemen typically develop long, like take longer to develop and forwards. Goaltending definitely takes the longest to develop mm -hmm. just because, you know, it's a, it's a big important thing. Like, and it takes There's a while a reason, to get good at it. There's a reason why uh, a lot of teams like have a long, like a laundry list of goaltenders in their, in, in their development system. Because some will pan out, some won't, and it takes longer for a lot of them. So, and you, you know, like sometimes, you know, you might find a gem in the ECHL. Like he's just he's just waiting, and all of a sudden he makes the next jump to the AHL. And all of a sudden, oh, he's still good. Make another jump, and then does well. Does it happen often? No. And that's why I say it's a gem because it's you know it's rare when you see that happen. But it's but it happens. It does happen. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I, I think the Melka, like so much of his next season is going to develop or is going to depend on you know, who he is playing with because I think we saw that he played best when he had those opportunities to reset, when he had someone that he could trust to go in net for the Coyotes. Um, so I, I think if the Coyotes have that support system for him, and by support system, I mean a competent 1B slash backup goaltender, then we can get a good season from Vimelka. Uh, we don't have that yet. So I, yeah. I'm not really sure how he is going to stack up next year. Yeah, we're definitely going to keep an eye out through the off season of goal of potential veteran goaltenders who are still have stuff to prove and, and, are, and are willing to make the push to, you know, you know, be a, you know, you know, kind of force Kobe Melka to look over his shoulder in some ways. It's not like not to scare him, but just to be like, oh yeah, you know, this guy's pretty good. Maybe like I want to get more starts, so let me play better than this guy. Yeah, like some internal competition doesn't really hurt, seem to hurt Vimelka. There are definitely goaltending goaltenders who you know don't like that. They don't like seeing oh, no, their jobs. There are some that terrify it, and I I think yeah. I, I believe that Kobe Milka seems to thrive off of it, and that's why Wedgwood was a great addition when he came in to uh, yeah. to help to, to help push um, Bay Milka. I mean, I also think that the Milka doesn't have the arrogance uh, to de think that like he has the job like on lock. He had one good <laughs> season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, like. And maybe arrogance isn't necessarily the right word, but like, you know, the, the level of confidence to be like, yeah, no, this is me. Look, I deserve this spot. Absolutely. Like, because it was very clear throughout the season, like, you know, like the Melko looked shaky. He did not look like he was ready to play a game and there was nobody else in there that they could throw in. Like Prosvetov would have been worse. 
So Terry would have been worse. Uh, Wedgwood, I think he was hurt. Um, but there was definitely times where you're like, Vimelka, like he needs someone. Like mm-hmm. we need a backup for him. And I think that's going to keep him, you know, striving, keep him, you know, wanting to be involved, keep him improving his game because he's got a taste and he he now knows like what it could be and you know hopefully once more. Absolutely, and this is what this is like. It's just seeing him like a player like Vemoka grow. It makes me excited for the future for the Coyotes. Is mm-hmm. it? It takes long. It takes a bit to grow, but he's gonna continue to look awesome doing it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I will also just say this. Um, maybe expect the Coyotes to draft a couple like late round goaltenders uh, in this upcoming draft. Like I-, I think like there are plenty of areas that they need to restock. Goaltending prospects definitely up there. I mean, let's 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 look at again how many picks the Coyotes have in the upcoming draft. You know, they have obviously three in the first round. There's no goaltenders. There's no good goaltenders available to even think first round, but. Got four in the second round, maybe um, a third round pick, fifth round pick, and a sixth round pick. Like I do kind of wonder, is there maybe a goaltender good enough for like a 30th? Like, we'll have, it's a we big might have risk. To that. We might have when, when we get when we get to more draft profiles, we'll take a look at any goal, any any of the top goaltending prospects and ask the experts and be like, hey. Does this person is is this goaltender, you know, worth taking at number thirty or thirty two or or something yeah. like that? Because it's gonna be that because the Coyotes are gonna have a pick that high. Like, yeah. two first picks we need high. to know where the pick is gonna be, and then we can start looking. But I, I really don't know. I'm not sure what the Coyotes are gonna do. I think goaltending is definitely a, a, an area that they need to focus on this off season. And it's probably going to give us like a lot of clues about what's going to be coming up in the next right. few seasons. It will be, um, but it will be good. It will be good to follow. You know what the Coyotes do with that with that position, and again, what 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 Kovey Malka does to continue to improve his game as we see all stuff like that. Because so far he has impressed, and I I just want to see more from this kid. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyways, that is just about it for this episode of Locked On Coyotes. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We are available everywhere you get your podcast, including on YouTube. Don't, don't forget to interact with us on social media. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Locked On Coyotes, on Instagram at Locked On Coyotes, and on Twitter at LO underscore Coyotes. I am personally at Robin underscore Leonio. Carl Pavlock is Carl Pavlock F. H. Ask us a question, interact with us, do what you want, and we can interact right back or on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy, and don't forget to howl on.